Y'all thought we were done with you guys. No. We have no lives. <laughs> so we're here to annoy you. Yeah. For one more week. Or one. maybe two. Oh. Or maybe three. Another decade. No. <laughs> You'll never get rid of us. <laughs> Time to use some seasoning for season two. What I'd like to see on season two? Me. Hello guys and welcome back to another video. So what are we serving today? Um, I was inspired, um... Just inspired. inspired. You just felt inspired. <laughs> yeah, like I was going for like a golden look, like an update for my Roman gold look from earlier this season. But in a diva kind of way, okay? And then I saw the Coca-Cola palette and I was like, let's add some red so I can wear this earring. Bloodlust Gladiator. I'm presenting from the capital, from the Hunger Games. And I'm just from Essex. <laughs> <laughs> Don't I look like a British goo? Goo, goo from Ixix. 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 <laughs> Never heard of it. So as y'all can see, I'm so bad at accents. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Even her native one. Yeah. <laughs> so what are we gonna do today? Nothing. We're Which gonna review deep. shampoo bottles. Yes. And this pop socket. Pop socket. Pop no, socket. just kidding. <laughs> are we? We're never kidding. It's always serious. Today we thought it would be a fun idea to look back at season two. Look back at season two. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I had a brain fart. A brain fart. Um, so we thought it would be a fun idea to look back at season one, our very first season of Dutchy Drag Race. Dutcher Lands Drag Dutcher Race. Lands. Look back at it, look at what we liked, but also look at what we would improve for a potential season two. Yeah. Because we loved the season. Um, I mean, it had some like, um, yeah, we always call them child's diseases in the Dutch. Kinderziektes. Kinderziektes? Yeah, it's really Black. fucked up. I ju I'm just realizing this now that I'm translating it. These are proverbs, I'm sorry. Still gonna continue teaching you about And Dutch teaching events. me, okay? I have never heard of that before. <laughs> um, very first season. You can't just copy-paste something American and put it in the Netherlands. Uh <laughs> Bears. Earrings made a death drop. <laughs> it did. Now I just, re I put in my own earring again, but now it just really doesn't make sense. So I have a red liner. Just imagine that. Earring. Just, yeah, you have like the screenshot from your eye patch, right? So you can just, whenever my ears in, in, in like a line of vision, just add it. I'll just try to be like this the whole time. This is my good side, I think, anyway, so. Wait, how do I take selfies? No, oh, Black. wrong one. We're both at our worst sides. <laughs> we are. Like, what is this? We both get to see our best sides. Yeah, but, but you don't. But now you can see You don't my, deserve it. Now you can see my earrings. <gasps> Fun fact, just like a quick story. These are just literally keychains that I bought from our local supermarket. Two dollars a piece. Literally. And I was like, I need those as earrings. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like at the cashier and then they couldn't really find um, the price tag of these things. So they had to shout to the other employer saying like, Hey, um, what's the price of this earring? <laughs> so I felt very exposed. Like, why Why is this man freaking buying two of these keychains? Keychains. Keychains. So that was very why embarrassing. <laughs> but I look cute now. Do you? <laughs> so we thought it would be a fun idea to look back at season one, our very first season, and um, basically look at what we would like to see for season two if we get one. Yeah. Yeah. In general, it was such a good season, okay? Definitely. We're very proud of our very first season. Like, yes. um, I mean, it's our first season, so of course we're going to love it. But also if you look back at other first seasons or like earlier seasons from Drag Race US, if you compare it to Drag Race UK, Drag Race Thailand, and Drag Race Canada, we're off to a really good start. Yeah. So I think it's something to be proud of, for yeah. sure. It's definitely on a different level compared to the seasons you've mentioned. <laughs> yeah. So and yeah. Not per se better or worse. It's just a different plane of existence for us. Because yeah. we can say European drag is in a way less over the top and more about fashion and looking stylish and being an, a good performer without the stunts. Yeah. Even though some of us love stunts, obviously, but it's just a, a very different kind of drag at times. Yeah. It's all about like serving a certain fantasy, basically. Let's just dig in. We've got yeah. 10 things we would like to see on season two. And these can be things we want to admit <laughs> or things that we'd like to add. It's open season. Yeah. We've already mentioned a couple of things during our reviews. Yeah. So 
This is just to tie everything in. So the first thing we would like to see is way more Dutch lip syncs. Um, not only in the Dutch language, but also by Dutch artists that happen to be in English. We have so many good songs. We have so many good singers. Yeah. Um, several of them were on the panel. Like we had Atelier Rombly and Richard Kot, who were like the most iconic Eurovision entries for us in the 90s. Yeah. Why wasn't their song included as a lip sync song? Because songs like Hamel and Arda would have worked as a lip sync song. Yeah. And we've been stressing since the beginning. Which song did we want to hear? Hey, it's for me. Let's go. Hands to my like we can play that song obviously in our video, but go check that song out. It's yeah. like the perfect final two showdown song because hi is for my translates to it's mine or he's mine. It's very um, inspired by the boy is mine yeah. by Monica and Randy. Yeah. So yeah, it's the same vibe, but then kind of modernized. Perfect song. In Dutch. In Dutch. Yeah. We love to also show off our Dutch musical culture because we have so many good songs and artists. Yeah. And it's just sad that all of the songs were kind of like dated and American and there weren't really modern songs. And there was only one song by a Dutch artist. Yeah. And I think that's sad. Yeah. Number two, we'd like less sprays for expensive things like Louboutins. Can we please preface that? <laughs> yeah. Please. It kind of really uh, gives off, uh, to me, like a, a bad message that drag has to be expensive, which is mm -hmm. definitely not the case. I mean, drag can be super cheap, but like expensive looking, or it can be super crafty, but still good. Why does everything have to have a red bottom, okay? Yeah. I can just grab my nail polish, red nail polish, and polish all my shoes with the red bottom, okay? Yeah. Like, I, I think it's cool that um, there were red bottoms on the runway, of course. But I don't think that it should get the praise all the time because that gives off the message, like you said, that you should just invest a lot of money for an expensive outfit and then you'll be fine. Yeah. Whereas the creativity of self-made outfits, that can also be expensive, by the way, but like it doesn't have to be. Maybe it's more like we don't want a, the praise for designer all the time. Yeah. Because there are queens that make all their stuff themselves and it's amazing and that should get praise too. Yeah. And that actually leads into the next point. We want more critiques about the outfits themselves. Yeah. Like how are they structured? The materials? Where are the hems? There's a hem everywhere. Hem. <laughs> the, like, all of the critiques were mostly about whether the entire thing was polished and whether there were good shoes. Yeah, there were no constructive criticism. No, there was... I, like. I think overall, the entire season, there was one comment about fabric choice. There was in the beginning. <laughs> in <laughs> episode, episode one, one. Yeah, yeah. by a designer. Yeah. I feel like there needs to be a lot more constructive criticism towards their concepts as well to give critiques on how to improve how you present yourself mm -hmm. but also like styling wise you know you can also definitely give them feedback on certain things don't work and certain things do work yeah so that they can pick that up for the next week i think that's also what messed up um madame madness's run because the only thing they really did was complain about how she incorporated the beard but not advice or perhaps wishes of how she would incorporate the beard and that's probably why she interpreted all the criticism as i should shave my beard rather than i should see how i can incorporate it in a different way like with the cow spots yep. it was one black beard perhaps she could have added white spots into the beard that would have been better criticism yeah more constructive and more something she could do with it rather than well i guess i'll shave it off then yeah so i would like that for a season too. Yeah. It could also be that they've said that, but that it didn't get into the editing. Could be, but then I'd like to see it. True, yeah. So we don't know for sure if it's on the judges' side or on the editing side, but yeah, we just want to see more constructive criticism in general. Yeah. yeah. And that brings us to point four. More time for the editors. This season was shot in, I think, August or around that time, during summer especially. And that just left not a lot of time for the editors to complete the season, build the storylines. Usually what we see with America's Drag Race is that it's filmed in July and it airs in February or March. Yeah, almost a year after. <laughs> yeah, it, it feels ludicrous at times how much time is in between, but it does give them more time to polish the episodes. Yeah. And I felt some of the Dutch episodes felt really rushed and there were some editing mistakes that I actually shouldn't do shouldn't um snatch game 
Uh, also, like name cards that were wrong. Yeah. Th those are minor things, but they are things that should have been fixed. And I think if they would have given themselves more time, they would have been able to do so. Yes. I do think there were perhaps issues with the rights that were expire at the end of the year. Oh. Um, so I get it, but hopefully for a new contract for a season two, they will be able to give their editors more time to yeah. really spend love and time on their craft. Yeah, yeah. Like we saw some of the episodes really had amazing editing. Yeah. Um, especially the makeover episode. Yeah, and the final yeah. episode. So we know they can do it. Yeah. But they need the time to do it. Yeah. And I think they got pushed back because of Miss Rona. Maybe. Because maybe they uh, planned filming it way earlier and then they got pushed back because of the virality of Miss Rona in the beginning of March. Yeah. So, and then they had to push everything to August, which made everything very tight. Because we also heard from Envy and um, Janie on their live stream that they had three weeks in between the filming of the last episode and the promo shoots. Three weeks. Yeah. That's nothing. And I think two weeks after that, it aired. It aired. Yeah, boom. Or <laughs> not much time was in between. No. Um, so give him time, please. Yes. <laughs> Take the time. Take Please. the time, okay. So we're at number five. So, so that's actually what we would like to see. So, yeah. So, so we would love to finally see a sewing challenge. Yes. And that also kind of like tests the girls a bit. Those who kind of rely on designers mm -hmm. need to like find creative ways to create a look. Exactly. And that I think really is such a big part of being a drag queen. Being able to construct looks your own and to be very resourceful. I think that's a very yeah. important part of um, yeah, being a drag queen. I think that would have also been an amazing opportunity to let queens like Petty Pam Pam and Mama, Mama queen. queen shine. Yeah. Because I do think that we should showcase all the talents and I, I get that some queens rely on designers, but we should also compliment the queens that don't rely on them and work on their own garments and yeah. sew them themselves. Yeah. And it's also just always a fun way to see how people cope with that challenge, especially with unconventional materials. Yeah. So for season two, we would love one, but not in episode one. I think that's cruel. Never episode one, because you want to showcase your own drag that you've brought mm. before having that kind of challenge. True, true. I really like the newer seasons of RuPaul's Drag Race, where they have like two episodes showcasing each girl's talent. Yeah. I kind of have like a talent show or like kind of like have a runway moment where they showcase their drag. Yeah. And then they do not really have a, an elimination. That's a better way to start yeah. the season. For me personally, season 6 and season 12 were my favorites. Yeah. Also because you really get to know the queens before... Well, not in season uh, 6 because they send people home in the first True. episode. Yeah. But in season 12 they didn't until episode 3 and I think that format really works for me. Yeah. Because you get to know everyone. Yeah. And I would have loved to get to know Room and Patty Pan Pam much more because they were hilarious. They are and they just fell short during a couple of challenges which is Did very important. <laughs> <laughs> Which is unfortunate, but yeah, so... Um, wait, that's a bonus suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. So, number six. We would like to see more judges from the community. And that is the LGBTQI plus community. Please. That's like a general note to yeah. all the Drag Race franchises, basically. Yeah. I have to say, like, the judge that I enjoyed the most was obviously Nikki. And that's also because she really understood drag, she understood the community, she understood makeup. That helps, of course. Uh -huh. But I think it's just very important to also showcase our LGBT plus uh, talent. Yeah. Also, Rick Paul was a, an amazing judge. And I think that since this is culturally rooted in the LGBT community, that it should also source judges more from that. Yeah. To avoid perhaps some awkward moments where being creative isn't understood and people are looking for a man inside of someone who's... Non-binary. Who's non-binary. We would not like to see that again, okay? Yeah, that was pain. I mean, it was needed for the Dutch public perhaps yeah. to get introduced to it. Yeah. But rather not again. Rather not. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just say that. Leave it at uh, season one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think if 
it's so weird that not a lot of Drag Race franchises uh, choose to have drag queens as guest judges as well. Yeah. Maybe because all the drag queens want to participate on Drag Race, but why not alumni uh, drag queens? I would actually love that. Yeah. Because um, with Drag Race Thailand, I thought it really worked. Yeah. They had two drag queens on the panel. Yeah. Um, Art Arya and um, Panjana Heels were amazing together and it really worked to get two sides, two perspectives on drag on the judging panel. Thailand also um, had a couple of times where they invited drag queens. Yeah. Yeah. And that worked because, yeah, it, I want to have some feedback from my fellow queens. I would listen to them more easily than like a couple of outsiders <laughs> yeah I mean it, the people that you invite should know the craft that you're doing that's why for a comedy challenge we get comedians or comedy actors for a dance challenge we usually get a dancer but why not also have the drag perspective in there because drag queens are drag queens yeah as and as <laughs> <laughs> what what then next up number seven we'd like to see more queens from around the Netherlands and Belgium this season heavily sourced from the Amsterdam and Rotterdam scene, which is understandable because that's the largest scene that we have in the Netherlands. But there's uh, multiple smaller scenes around the Netherlands, like in our city Groningen. And we would love to see those areas represented as well on Drag yeah. Race. I understand why they chose to invite a lot of Amsterdam-based queens and Rotterdam-based queens for this season. They just really wanted to wow the public that haven't seen Drag Race before, so they really wanted to pick the best from the best. And this season they also didn't have any additions, so it was just handpicked yep. by the producers. And I get it, they went for like the biggest names in drag, but there are so many good queens that might perhaps not have the same brand recognition in Amsterdam and Rotterdam, mm -hmm. uh, but I think they should be included. So I hope for season two they do open auditions yep. for Drag Races all around the nation. Yep. Yeah, very excited to see that opportunity if auditions are being held. Yeah. Oh. Then number eight. Like we said, we loved Save the Date as a challenge. So we would love more improv challenges. Yes. We would have loved to see that as a maxi challenge. Yes. Like a full week dedicated on improv and maybe like teach them some lessons about improv as well. Yeah. I think as a drag queen, this is such a nice skill to have as well to think quick on your feet yeah and to i mean like reading as well that's also improv so yeah. it's a big part of drag and i and, and we love seeing the improv challenges on rupaul's drag race as well so yeah i mean i was also an improv queen so that, that helps this whole yeah but yeah I, I think those challenges really show your creative side and how you would deal in certain situations yeah so i would love to see that as like a full challenge yeah yeah Fierce Brock Ally. <laughs> then number nine. Nine. We would love to see longer snatch games. Please. Please. No mini challenges this time. <laughs> yeah, I think snatch games should just be an entire episode without a mini challenge. Um, and you shouldn't cut out an entire person completely. Because Janie did not get any answers on air. Yeah. I mean, she had funny moments, but we saw no answers that she gave, and I think that's a waste. Yeah. Because I want to know whether she was funny or not. Yeah. I mean, her moments were funny, but what, were her answers funny? I don't know. And then, last but not least, no more royal challenges. No. Oh, we're so done. And red, white, and blue. Or, I, like, those two combined. <laughs> I, I think we've seen all the iterations of red, white, and blue by now. Yeah. So, we would like to skip that next season. Yeah, please. 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 Unless you do like an orange challenge, because that's a difficult color. But we've already seen that. Have we? Yeah, on Drag Race, on RuPaul's Drag Race. Yeah, but not Drag Race Holland. That's, that's the beauty of Drag Race Holland. We can literally reuse anything the Americas did. The Americas. Like we did. <laughs> the Americas. We can literally reuse anything the US did, and it will be brand new for us because it's True. a new Dutch interpretation of the challenge. Like the workout video challenge. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think the earlier seasons of Drag Race had very interesting and fun challenge ideas that are just now never reused. So. Yeah. I think us new franchises, the Dutch version, the Canadian version, the UK version, we can use that as inspiration and make it our own. Yeah. Because those are iconic. Yeah. 
So that's basically our suggestion list yeah, for those, season two. Those are 10 things we would like to see on season two. Yeah. Um, let us know in the comments what you would like to see on season two. Yes. Is it Lasmita? Do I even want that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, give us some suggestions. Are you, Do you agree with our suggestions? Do you want to see a season two? Like, in general. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no one's waiting. No one's waiting for this, yeah. No, but let us know what you would like to see, uh, whether you agree. And in the meantime, drink loads of water. Loads of water. Keep yourself hydrated. Yeah. And basically, that's it. That's okay. it. That's it. Um, see you next week in the same outfit. Same outfit. Because we're cheap. Okay. We're going to shoot another one after this. Yeah. Bye. Bye. What I like to see on season two, my fat my <laughs> <laughs> Season two, take notes. Are we even ready for season two? Bye, English. Bye, English.